This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Today, we are going to talk about why it is really foolish to want your husband to masturbate and think that this is like a real good idea and you're really being efficient uh, and effective as a partner and in your marriage, which strangely, many women think. And many men think it too, quite honestly. So, you know, being... um, Being short-sighted is not a gender-specific thing, and I will explain why this is very short-sighted after I tell you to subscribe. My most recent subscriber episode was on responsive desire versus zero desire, and uh, when women say, are you done yet during sex, and why that should really never happen for various reasons that I will explain. Uh, So all my responsive desire aficionados that think that they know the sum total of what there is on responsive desire after listening to my podcasts... uh, Um, you know, a lot, can certainly learn something new from that subscriber-only podcast. And I will tell you that uh, $5.99 per month is truly a drop in the bucket compared to what it would be to get individual sessions with me. So you really ought to make use of that um, if, if 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 you're on a budget and trying to learn as much as you can about these topics. Uh, Anyway, so on to the topic at hand at hand, haha. Uh, So a lot of women think, and men tell me this thing too, you know, that it's better for the marriage if the guy masturbates. And here's why, because he gets an outlet. So they don't have the same libido. And of course, in this culture, if everybody needs to do only what they want all of the time, then, um, you know, her her low libido is considered just, you know, complete non-starter. She hasn't listened to the Dr. Psych Mom show. Then um, this way, you know, so so it's considered like my tennis analogy that I made, I think, in my subscriber episode yesterday. Um, she likes to play tennis. He doesn't. So she goes and finds another tennis partner. Oh, that's a good idea. Great. Everybody's happy. Um, so it's the same thing. He wants to have sex. She doesn't. So great. He goes and masturbates. Now, do you see any problem with this? Any logical fallacy here? So hopefully... Her entire love language, the reason that she finds meaning in life, the re- the things she wanted to do since she was a little uh, girl, well, not that little, a pubescent girl, is find a tennis partner. Now, let me tell you something. If that was the case, if she was fucking, you know, Serena Williams here or whatever, and tennis was her whole reason for being alive and what made her feel good about herself and she had visualized having a man to play tennis with for the rest of her life, well, yes, she should divorce his ass if he decides that he just doesn't want to play tennis anymore. 100%, 100,000%. If that was the premise implicitly of their marriage and they played tennis multiple times a week and then all of a sudden he was like, mm, you know what, I don't like it anymore. So why don't you go find yourself another tennis partner? Then she should, at the very least, haul his ass into couples counseling and that should be that. You know, because uh, unless, of course, let's say he loses his arm or he becomes extremely depressed or he breaks his arm or he has a... uh Uh, some other horrible health-related concern. And in that case, everything should be built around understanding and helping him, getting him his individual treatment. And if he decides that he doesn't want tenants even after all that is resolved, if it is resolved, then truly that would be taken as a gauntlet thrown down because he is repudiating a basic tenant of their marriage that was implied, if not explicit, that he would remain her tennis partner. So in this case, it would be a very good analogy. Uh, In the normative case, a woman does not build her entire life around having tennis with her significant other. And so um, having tennis, you see um, what the analogy is obviously going to be because of how I'm phrasing it, playing tennis, having sex. Um, So she doesn't, you know, so then fine. So she goes and plays with her friend instead of him. No biggie. Her friend uh, is nice. She likes to hang out with her friend anyway. No harm, no foul. This is not the same thing with the man going to masturbate to outsource his sex life. Because, uh, you know, 
make no bones about it, that's what's happening. He's outsourcing his sex life and he is now having sex life by himself. And the sex life by himself is far better than the sex life he's having with her. And you say, why is that? Well, because with the sex life with her, uh, oh, the same woman that's going to say, yeah, sure, I'll go jerk off, is a woman that is not going to put a lot of time and effort into the sex life. She does not view herself necessarily as a sexual entity. She looks down on sex and thinks it is something to be outsourced. So therefore, the sex they're having is kind of trash. It's boring. Uh, nobody enjoys it really that much. And really, the sex that he's having with the porn that he's looking at, of course, he should not be looking at porn in context of trying to make a better sex life. But in this case, it, it, you know, I mean, she tells him to go jerk off. She literally tells him to go jerk off. So why do it just yourself? Why not have a, some, some virtual friends with you, which are, you know, the women that he looks at on the internet. So he looks at the women on the internet. They'll do whatever. But really, honestly, guys don't care as much about them swinging from the chandeliers as that they look happy to be there. You know, they smile and um, they, it's not about the body. It's about the attitude, you know? And so with uh, his imaginary friends that he that download new videos probably every day, uh, he, he gets to have his sex life by himself. Oh, then you say, well, that's great. So he's getting to have a sex life. She's not getting to have a sex life. Both of them get what they want. Until they get divorced, right? Because that's what ends up happening. Because a man who is uh, putting his sex life uh, in in a corner, in his in a, in a category, in a bucket that has nothing to do with his wife, no longer feels much affinity toward his wife. I mean, really, she doesn't care about the central thing that makes him feel like a man and that makes him feel close. So, you know, he doesn't have any tenderness then toward her, really. You know, he may have tenderness for her if she is really ill. You know, if she says, honey, you know, you have to take care of yourself because I have this horrible problem or I'm breastfeeding or I have just had a baby or I am pregnant with a difficult pregnancy. All right, fine. This is time limited. You know, he can have tenderness toward her then and he can actually think of the masturbation thing as her being generous, particularly if she was against it prior. But if a woman who can go to the gym, who takes walks with the kids, who is generally in physical health, that is okay, who has a job, who, you know, leaves the house, who is not an invalid, uh, says, you know what, mm, it's not my interest, so uh, I've, I have other things to do. By the time I do all those other things, quite honestly, I'm tired, so why don't you go do your own thing? This would be fine if this was, uh, you know, she didn't like to play checkers with him anymore. It is not fine when it is like the primary um, love, love language doesn't even really cut it. You know, it's like the thing that I always say from the Dead Bedrooms Reddit, the tagline at least uh, used to be, uh, there's only one love language, the other one are like languages or something like that, which I thought was funny. And by the way, some people told me, like when I said that that's a good place for people to get support, they said, um, a couple people wrote in and said, no, it's very anti-sex. So I went and looked at it, always open to feedback, and uh, it's not. I mean, like you're just then seeing it through your own lens because I looked at it, there was like 50% of it was a low libido people, 50% of it was a high libido people, and I didn't see anybody get shamed for a high libido, but that's just an aside. So I mean, I did, I, I responded to that feedback and I looked at it again and I saw plenty of advice from peers on that uh, forum toward people that were saying like, if your needs aren't getting met, then get out of the relationship which is the exact uh, opposite of being shamed for a high sex drive. So I, I don't know what y'all are talking about. I think that, you know, you're seeing things, obviously, as everybody does, with confirmation bias. Like, you see every single time that somebody gets shamed for it because that's what you're looking out for because you're reckoning with personal, you know, stuff around sex. But anyway, that's an aside. I still think that it's a good place to look on the internet for um, seeing how other people deal with this low libido situation or, you know, mismatch libidos. But anyway, uh, going back to what we're talking about here. So it's not just a love language. You know, it is like 
the reason, as I discussed in a recent podcast, that guys get married, you know, to be with someone they love, that they're attracted to, that they have sex with. That's why you are married. That's why you're not dating. That's why you are not just roommates, right? So this is what makes it into a marriage. So when women say, why don't you just jerk off? This is as though, as I said in my thing, as though like you are telling her, why don't you just get love letters from like a guy? on the internet like why don't you just get like a prison pen pal or something he'll be in love with you I'll tell you if you know how many women would leave their husbands <laughs> for a man who's literally in prison that writes them a love letter because their husband doesn't do shit in that regard you know so no man would say that that has a brain but yet many women that are smart in every other regard say this oh why don't you go just jer- go jerk off because it's, and then the man who is not blameless in this regard says, oh, good idea. I'll go jerk off. You know, I'll go, I'll put my sexuality completely distinct from my role as a husband. And you know what? It'll work out in the end. No, it doesn't work out in the end. What happens is the man's sexuality becomes a him thing. He's only sexual with the women in the computer, pretty much. And then he has, when he looks at her, he sees very little, you know, very little that makes him feel good about himself, very little that makes him feel close. She no longer becomes a source of, of comfort and solace and anything because the same woman, by the way, that's going to say go jerk off is not usually very empathic in any other regard. So it's not like she's um, very loving and sweet and kissy and, and um, making his favorite meal all the time. No, I mean, she's, she looks at the relationship relationship more like a business you have this other interest we listen we have x amount of time in the day I choose to spend my time on these 10 things you choose to spend your time on those 10 things we got to overlap with seven of the 10 because they have to do with the home and the kids so we each get three one of your three is going to be jerking off well three of my three are not so you know that's how it rolls this reminds me of nothing less than the fair play podcast you can go back to that one that book was a trip so if you want to google uh, you know you, you could search these by the way uh, people frequently ask me if I have they'll be like you have a podcast on depression so all you have to do is type in into Spotify Dr. Psych mom showed depression and then or depressed or you know you could try I don't have to tell you how to do a Google search and um, in the Spotify thing and you find something so that is most of you know that but some of you didn't I understand I'm technologically not very savvy myself Anyway, so that's, you could do that too. Um, Anyway, so the point being, making your sex life separate makes your your whole emotional life separate. So then the times that he has sex with you are bad outliers. And the time that he's masturbating by himself is the fun part. And this makes the marriage very, very weak. And it makes it feel very distant and detached. Also, the more the guy looks at porn, the more that stuff's going to be coming up in his head when he's having sex with you or when he's thinking about other people. Porn use is bad for the marriage overall, particularly if it's already a bad sex life. It artificially inflates the man's uh, sex drive and it makes him think sex is everywhere. So that's the other thing is it can be a gateway drug to infidelity because the man starts to think that sex is everywhere and he's just the only idiot that's not getting any. So especially, as I've said repeatedly, with the amateur stuff. So that quote amateur stuff, which is really people that are running a very good business, you know, making a lot of money, a man and a woman that are, you know, game planning how to do this and all of this. So it's not like, you know, like men when they're aroused and they're watching this stuff, they think, man, these people just must fuck all the time. Yeah, maybe, maybe they're two sex addicts, which also is not very good, but uh, probably they're running a business, you know, 99% of them are like, oh, well, is today going to be anal day, hon? I don't know. No, I think we just did ain't all like, what do you say we do this? But whatever. So the gateway drug thing I mean is that if they look at enough porn, especially the amateur stuff, they are going to start thinking, oh, wow, there are some women that fuck their husbands. And why don't I have one? 
which, you know, quite honestly, porn or no porn is a good question. So you, you really, it, it's not good for the marriage to tell one person to outsource their basic need as a human being. Just as ridiculous as it would be for you to say, why don't you just find some guy on the internet that you've never met that could write you love letters, you know, and that you could talk to and you'll never meet him. He's in prison or he's in Antarctica, you know, or he, you know, lives in a tower and uh, in a fairy tale and you're just never going to meet him. Is this good? No, she's going to start to spend most of her emotional life. Most of the time she's talking to you about what cereal to buy. She's going to be thinking about this dude. You know, it doesn't matter if she's never going to meet him. This is the relationship that your husband is forming with the porn actresses, you know, or with even just one woman in one montage that he keeps thinking about. Because you don't, this should be commonsensical, you do not want your partner to be outsourcing their basic human need for love to somebody or something else. You don't. Just like it would make a woman, so this is interesting, a thought experiment, would it make you uncomfortable? comfortable to have a robot in your house that was hotter than you, a sex robot, you know, your children wouldn't see it. She would live in the closet and every night at 8 p.m. she activates and has sex with your husband. Does it make you uncomfortable? It should, right? I mean, I think it does, you know, uncanny valley type of stuff, notwithstanding about her being a robot. You know, she's not real, but you know, your husband would bond to her, right? Just like your kids bond to like a doll or even a toy robot, right? And why would your husband bond to her because she's doing something that you don't do that's his basic need so if there was a, a male robot that gave you massages and whispered into your ear sweet nothing should your husband love that not unless he's a moron because that's the thing that you're gonna bond to and you can really only bond we are pair bonding mammals the poly people aside the ones that I work with seem to have a hierarchy <laughs> and you know all, all love is not equal and so so your, your spouse would start to love the robot just a little bit more because the robot's doing something that is key for them as a person. You know, there's some um, the better than us. There was something I watched on Amazon Prime. It was translated from Russian. Anyway, it was like a, a robot, you know? I mean, you should watch it. And the kid bonds to the robot because the robot is a very loving mother. Um, and the guy starts to bond to the robot. The robot's really hot, you know? <laughs> But anyway, it's 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 one of these things that is the you know the Twilight Zone episodes back in the day all used to be about nuclear holocaust. Now it's it's whatever everybody's scared about in society. So now it's about robots taking over. Well, they got a point, right? I mean, if you're telling your husband basically go jerk off with a robot, which is the same as look at porn, it's the same thing, you know. Then your husband is gonna bond to this thing. That's what he's going to bond to. He's going to bond to the woman, the the fact that he, or the couple, or, you know, it, most people don't go to random shit all the time. Most people go back to certain things, and that is going to become the thing that he thinks about instead of, th of memories that he's making with you. So if you're truly at a point where you don't care, where that sounds like a really good relief, and you think, all right, just let him outsource it for a few more years, kids get older, then we could separate right? Fine. You know, like do it as long as you're honest about it. As long as you're like, listen, I don't want to have sex anymore. I'm never going to again. I really do want to stay together. Our children are, let's say, you know, uh, 14 through 18. I want to wait together four more years, give them an intact family, and then we could separate. A lot of men will say yes. A lot of men in today's child-centered society particularly will say, okay, sounds good. But don't do it and think who I'm really talking to are the people whose marriages aren't horrible, who just think that this is like a good idea. It's not a good idea. It's not a good idea, just like it wouldn't be a good idea for you to have a, um, you know, a, a male romance robot, you know, because you're going to fall in love with him and that's going to be a problem. So, so, you know, think of this what you will, but at least take it as a warning that there, there's no free lunch. My favorite thing to say, my husband laughs at that, it's my favorite thing to say, it's true. There's no free lunch. You cannot outsource your husband's entire sex life, but expect him to love you the same.
he's not going to love you the same because you're not giving him what he needs. Something else is giving him what he needs. And if you have so much uh, issue with the fact that sex is something that he needs, that's likely due to the way that you were raised in a negative, uh, sex negative, sex fearful uh, home and you have negative attitudes towards sex that preclude you from a deeper understanding of how key this is evolutionarily even in how people bond. This is, this is what it is to bond. We weren't made to find our ideal roommate and live happily ever after. We were made to find a partner. And a partner is somebody that you procreate with. And even if you can't procreate anymore, you still want to procreate. You know, there you still have that feeling, that impetus. Like that is what keeps our species going. It, what keeps our species going is not that, you know, she's looking at TikTok in one room and he's jacking off to Pornhub in the other room. That doesn't keep our species going and it doesn't keep the individual marriage going either. And it doesn't keep the kids happy either. You know, not that they know what anybody's doing, but they can feel that icy disconnect. You know, they really can. All right. Hopefully uh, this helped you rejigger your perspective on something or other that I spoke about. And I'll talk to you all soon. Have a great day. Bye bye.